In one of our recent devotional passages, we looked at Luke chapter 22, verse 3 through 6. Let me read it. It's, it's, not, it's not long, and it's about Judas, this really, really famous or infamous person. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. So he's in that intimate circle with Jesus. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him, that is Jesus, to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him, that is Jesus, to them in the absence of of a crowd. So he's going to wait for a time when there's not a lot of people around and then, you know, he'll sell out Jesus to to these people who basically want to murder Jesus. And the reason I want to talk about this is I think there's a kind of common view out there um, that G- Judas is this really, really bad person. And throughout the history, especially in the history of the West, Judas is considered like the worst guy of all time. I think in... in um, Dante's Inferno, Judas is there, like, this, this, like pretty much at the, at the worst place in hell. And most people think about Judas as this horrible, horrible person, and they think, how could he have possibly have sold out Jesus? Like, if I was there, I wouldn't have done that. I mean, like, you're with Jesus. He's Jesus. He, he uh, makes the blind to see. He makes the deaf to hear. He heals lepers. He's compassionate to the poor. He... Um, he uh, feeds 5,000. He makes the dead to rise. Uh, he's brilliant. He's uh, loving. He's compassionate. Poor people, hurting people, they all come to him. How could you have possibly sold out Jesus? I mean, don't you already know by now he must be God? He must be the Son of God? You've already seen just absolutely incredible things. So I think kind of the, the kind of an often standard common view of Jesus, especially among Christians, is something like this. But one of the things I, w- I really want to just say about this is, first of all, I want to challenge this view that G- Judas was this really bad guy. All right? um, in the Bible passage, a number of things is going on here. It is, it is, this portion about Judas betraying Jesus is just a little bit before Peter betrays Jesus. So you have Peter, and he denies Jesus three Jesus straight up tells him, you will deny me three times before you know the, the rooster crows. And, and then he probably thought, that's crazy. I'm not going to do that. He even says, no, no, we're all going to be there for you, even if we have to die. Peter said that. All the rest of these guys said that. And, of course, we know that Peter is considered, like, one of the best. He was the most brave. He's the most outspoken of the 12 disciples. And he's, every, so I mean, he's seen as the best guy. And oftentimes people would see Judas as the worst guy. But here in the Bible, they tell you about Judas and they tell you about Peter. And then it's not long after this that Peter doesn't just betray Jesus once, he does it three times. And it's not like these people show up with soldiers, um, you know, you know, it's already happened, the scary thing has happened, but then like this little girl just says, hey, weren't you with, aren't you one of them? You're with, you're with that Jesus guy, aren't you? And he, he just chickens out in front of this little girl. So, that's one of the important reasons, I think, from the passage, you have to start thinking about, in the context of the passage, Maybe Judas isn't just this really, really bad guy, but fundamentally, the best guy was not that different than supposedly the worst guy. That's one thing. Second thing, let me say is this. Among the 12, Judas is the treasure. He's the one that holds the money. And I don't know if they have a whole lot of money, but whoever held the money, that meant all the other 11 guys trusted him. That's what it means. And among these 12 guys, they're, they're different, coming from different, um, you know, like uh, backgrounds. One is Matthew, who's a tax collector, and there's another guy named Simon the Zealot. The Zealot, the, a Zealot is a guy who believes in violent revolution. He thinks the, the Romans are so bad, they're worth, um, you know, today he would, he'd be a terrorist. <laughs> Simon the terrorist, that's what he'd be. So then you got a guy who works for the Romans, he was a tax collector. You could just imagine... These guys are on opposite ends of the political spectrum, and they hate each other's guts. So that that's in, those are the guys inside of the twelve, and they regularly, you know, they, there's discussions where they they argue and they fight, and but they all trusted Judas. When it came to the money, they said that guy's honest. That guy's a good guy. 
you know, in any of your circles, if you have a, a circle of friends and, um, you know, and for whatever reason, you got to pull some money to pull some money together. You don't pick the dude who's got a gambling issue. You don't get you don't pick the guy who lies, lies, lies. You don't pick a guy who's just kind of forgetful and irresponsible. You pick the good guy. <laughs> That's the good guy. We all trust him. Well, guess what? You know who that guy was? That was Judas. Judas was the good guy. At least in all those guys. And it's not that easy to get, you know, other 11 other men plus Jesus to say, yeah, you, you can handle the money. But they all trusted him. And that's what it was like. This is the guy who thought at one point, I'm going to get off this ride. And, um, you know, um, I think I want to have some control and say over this. So let me just say a third thing. A lot of the passage, especially... You know, I've been meditating on these Gospel of Luke because these have been our, our, our devotionals. And I can't help but notice again and again, the chief priests and the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, these elite, you know, uh, brilliant and respected and usually, you know, well-moneyed people in the society. It says explicitly that they are conspiring to murder Jesus. They want to they get him killed. And... Early on, Jesus, if you read through the Gospels, Jesus is really, really popular in the first half of his public ministry. But then in the second half of his public, he just starts saying more and more offensive things. Things that start driving people crazy and they start bit by bit leaving. And at one point he even says, are you going to leave too? And now they're going to Jerusalem. And the Jerusalem is where all the most powerful people are. The most powerful Jews, the most powerful Romans. And by now... He and all the disciples, quite frankly, they all got to know, going to Jerusalem, this, this is dangerous. These people don't just dislike Jesus. They want him dead. And if they want him dead, then that means they might want us dead. And so at the beginning, you think he's the Messiah. He's going to kick out the Romans. He's going to bring world peace. He's going he's gonna to bring justice. And, um, and I want to be a part of the justice, and then I want to be in the king's court. He's really, really important. It's really, really exciting. He's gaining a lot of popularity. There's lots of followers. And I'm a really, really important one of his followers because I'm in, the, you know, in, that, in, that, in that really tight-knit group of 12. Lots of other of his followers don't get to be in that at the beginning. And so when he sets up his great reign and is the, is the ruler and the king of our government... I'll have an important place and I'll make really good money and people will look up to me and I'll have a really, really important place in our society. That's probably what he, he thought was going on. Regularly, this seemed to be the conception of the Messiah because understand, in, in modern day 21st century America, we need to understand, we tend to separate out um, you know, spiritual ideas and political ideas. But back then, it's a king. <laughs> a king, hello, that, that's, a, that's a political position. That has power. That has real might, power, wealth. That's At least that's any normal king does. And if Jesus is the Messiah, he's going to be the king. And don't you want to be on that bandwagon? If you think he's, he's, that, he's going to be the greatest king that ever is or ever was. And then he does all kinds of miracles. And it looks like he could be that, kind, that guy. And he's getting all kinds of followers and popularity. It looks like he could be that guy. But now they're going to Jerusalem. And maybe he's reading, you know, he's reading, he's reading the culture. He's reading, who's for us? Who's against us? This is really, really dangerous. And maybe he's just calculating. He's like, you know, when I signed up to go be, you know, follow this king, I, I didn't think, it, you know, it, I could get murdered for it. I could get killed for it. Jesus doesn't deserve to die, but like, um, maybe what he's doing is stupid. Maybe, maybe this supposed king is, maybe he's not actually the Messiah. Because he's going to get killed, and he's going to probably get me killed. And I didn't sign up for that. I didn't want that. And so you start thinking of he's looking for a way out. And he kind of wants to control the situation. And so instead of it just happening when he can't handle it, if he at least has some say in how it goes down, then he knows you know he's going to save his own neck. That's one. And two, maybe he can make some money out of it and get something good out of it. And so... It probably seemed like a good idea at the time. Now I want to ask you this question. If you're in his shoes and you're a good guy, maybe you believe in Jesus and you think, I would never, never, you know, like sell out Jesus. But have you ever sold out your friend? Have you ever sold out your boss? Have you ever sold out someone else close to you? 
like the pressure, the popularity, something kind of turned and you kind of caved or you caved. Does that ever happen to you? It's not an uncommon thing. And so understand Judas's position and he's a good guy. And I, I want to ask you this question. Do you think, you know, if you think it's so easy that you think you wouldn't have been Judas? Um, I want to ask you to think about that some more. And um, I think, I think I could have been Judas. Um, I think in that situation, I would have read, I would have read who's for us, who's against us, and read the politics of the situation. And if I wasn't looking to get killed, I could see myself making that decision. So in light of that, think about, you know, how we're going in our culture, where there's a lot of people who are starting to reject Christians and Jesus. And there's a lot to think about there. And what will you stand for when the chips are down? Please think about that, pray about that, ask the Lord for His grace, His power, His courage, His conviction to be faithful when it really matters.